Welcome to the Smarter Science of Slim, the scientifically proven program where you eat more and exercise less to burn fat and boost health. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hello, everyone. This is Coach Strick from CalorieConundrum.com, and I'm here with Jonathan Baylor, the man, Jonathan Baylor. The the person that actually inspired this entire website and the author of the book Smarter Science of Slim and his new book that's coming out, The Calorie Myth. So, Jonathan, uh, are you ready to debunk some calorie myths? I live to debunk calorie myths. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. I think we're uh, brothers from a different mother or something because um, about two years ago, I had no... You know, I had no passion or no desire to write a book, but I started working with clients as a personal trainer, and uh, more and more I was finding clients that were telling me they're eating like 900 calories and they're eating barely any food, and they still couldn't lose weight. And I was like, somebody should write a book about this, <laughs> like how, how what they're doing is not right. And then about a year, almost two years ago, I found your book, The Smarter Science of Slim. And I was like, he wrote my book. <laughs> so I, I thank you for that because uh, you had to read like 1,300 articles and over 10,000 pages of academic research to do it. So you saved me a lot of time by doing that. And I appreciate it. <laughs> um, my, that that but, was, was my goal because not everyone can spend the decade of having no friends and not sleeping <laughs> that I did. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I was like, this guy had to read all this research, but I'm glad you did because this book, I think, should be – this Smarter Science of Slim book, should, I think, should be required reading by anybody within yelling distance of somebody that's thinking about going on a diet because, I mean, it, it has all the evidence in there and what people should do if they're trying to lose weight and be healthy. Um, but, Jonathan, I, I would like to uh, come at this from a little bit different angle, and I, I want to ask some questions that people – Thing to ask when you tell them, you know, this, about this whole calorie myth thing. And when you say, you know, calories in, calories out, it's not the whole story. And so people, the first thing, a lot of, especially like trainers and people that advise people on weight loss, the first thing and one of the most common things they always say is the law of thermodynamics. What about the law of thermodynamics? Um, and how can this be true if, if there's this law of thermodynamics? I mean, it's a law. So how is this true? How is the calorie myth true if there's this thing? So, Sean, uh, let, me, let me do two quick things here to, to best serve your audience. One, I'm going to give you an answer to that question that I've actually never given before. So hopefully it's helpful. And also, I just want to really quickly mention to make sure that your readers can debunk these uh, calorie myths. So just really quick, my first book, The Smarter Science of Slim, actually doesn't exist anymore. You can try to buy it used on Amazon, but it's like right uh -huh. now, it's a, it's $177.79. I don't know why. <laughs> There's a black market for it on Amazon. However, however, um, December 31st of this year, 2013, HarperCollins is releasing the calorie myth, which contains all of the science found in The Smarter Science of Slim, plus 50,000 brand new words, more science, more studies. Just uh, just think of the Smarter Science of Slim as a six track demo tape. The Calorie Myth, okay. 18 track double disc. So check out calorie.com. Okay, right. But so to your thermodynamic question. So before I get into the meat of it, uh, uh, Sean, the key thing to keep in mind here is that there's two things, because I know your audience is pretty savvy. For something to happen in the body two conditions need to be met there needs to be a need but there needs to be a need for the thing to happen and then the body has to have the ability to respond let me give you a specific example i have a receding hairline if you look at a picture of me my hairline is receding rapidly and i'm not happy about that so, so i need, i need to regrow hair however my hair follicles do not have the ability to grow anymore. So when we go into a state of caloric deprivation, we conceptually need to burn fat. But that doesn't in and of itself mean that fat will get burnt, right? Like if you, if you, 
that's that's a that's a, a myth. It's a logical error. Just because the body needs to do something doesn't mean it can do that. Think about trying to deadlift a thousand pounds. If you need to deadlift a thousand pounds, that's not enough. You have to have the ability to deadlift a thousand pounds. So the core misunderstanding when people make thermodynamic arguments is as follows. There's not one law of thermodynamics, there's four. Two of them have nothing to do with biology. They have to do with defining absolute zero. The two that do apply tell us that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it can only change forms. Now that thermodynamic law does apply to the area of, of human well-being, but not as we've been taught. So here's how that applies. The argument that is traditionally made that you just alluded to, Sean, is that if you eat less and exercise more, there's two assumptions that are made at this point in the argument. The first is that if you eat less and exercise more, you will create a caloric deficit. That in and of itself is not a foregone conclusion. And we'll get to that in the next part of this answer. The second logical error is that if you eat less and exercise more, let's assume you do create a caloric deficit, then the body has to burn fat because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change form. So if you're in a state of caloric deficit, your body has to burn fat, right? Wrong. That is a complete logical fallacy because what thermodynamic laws, the two that apply, actually prove is that if, and this is a big if, if you are able to create a state of caloric deficit, the applicable laws of thermodynamics prove that your body has to do something thermodynamic law does not prove what a biological organism has to do. It just shows that the organism has to do something. We have to look to biology and endocrinology and neurobiology and gastroenterology to understand what a biological organism needs to do when it's in a state of energy deficiency. And when we do that, we get a pretty shocking discovery and we start to understand why 94, excuse me, 95.4% of people who attempt to starve themselves and lose weight on stair steppers do not have success long term. The reason for this is, Sean, when you do get in a state of caloric deficit, if you're able to get in a state of caloric deficit, the first thing your body does is not burn fat. It slows down. This has been demonstrated in every single clinical study that has ever tested it. You eat less or you start exercising dramatically more, your body, if it enters a state of caloric deficit, tries to conserve calories by slowing down. All of your listeners have experienced this. Just stop eating. The first thing you will feel is tired, cold, and like you're in a mental fog because your body has slowed down. So your body has to do something. It doesn't have to burn body fat. Actually, it makes a lot more sense for your body just to slow down. It would be like if you lost your job you lost your job and had no money coming in, you wouldn't immediately liquidate your 401k. What you would do is stop spending so much money, right? So that's exactly yeah. what you're yeah. So it slows that's down. Exactly. So just to quickly pause here, Sean. So first of all, if your body slows down dramatically and clinical studies have shown that in just a, a state of caloric deprivation, the body can drop its basal metabolic rate, among other things, up to 40%. So we're talking about a very vast slowdown. In and of itself, that right there could mean you're not in a state of caloric deficit anymore. Because if your body slows down 40% and you cut your calories 10%, you're not in a state of caloric deficit. In fact, you're in a state of caloric surplus, so that's how you can gain weight after actually eating less. Because now you're making your body run more efficiently on fewer calories, so you have to progressively eat less and less and less, and you can't keep up, and so you gain weight while eating less, which is incredibly frustrating. But let's say that doesn't happen and you starve yourself so well that you are able to create such a caloric deficit that your body slowing down is not enough and your body does need to burn tissue. Sean, logic tells us as well as clinical research that the thing your body's gonna burn is that which consumes the most calories, right? Your body's in a state where it does not have enough calories. So what's it wanna do? Conserve calories. So what's it gonna burn off? Well, it wants to, <laughs> ideally it would burn off your brain, your liver and your heart because those burn off a heck of a lot of calories, but it can't because you die. Except, <laughs> so instead yeah. it says, what could I burn off? Well, I can burn off muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is calorically heavy. Research shows that up to 70% of the weight you lose when you just starve yourself that isn't water weight is coming from muscle tissue. 
you don't want to burn off muscle tissue. That is not healthy and it's not helpful long term. In fact, the amount of lean muscle tissue a person has on their body is one of the strongest independent indicators of longevity and health available, even more so than body fat percentage, which is very interesting. So you eat less exercise more, your body slows down dramatically. Then if you're in a state of caloric deficit, your body burns off muscle tissue. That's no good. If at that point you're still in a state of caloric deficit, you will burn fat. But Sean, who cares? Because if you wanted to curse somebody to face a life of continuous and permanent struggle with their weight, there's two things you would do to that person. The first is you drop their base metabolic rate, aka exactly what would happen if you eat less and exercise more, and you'd burn off their muscle tissue. So this is why people don't have a hard time losing weight. Everyone's lost weight. The problem is keeping it off because the way we've been taught to lose weight sets us up for long-term fat gain, which is the opposite of what we want because we've been given a misinterpretation of the applicable laws of thermodynamics, which just contain a logical error, which is that thermodynamic law can speak to biological functions, which it can't. All thermodynamic law tells us is that if you starve yourself, your body has to do something. Doesn't tell us what the body has to do. What the body does do is a biological function, and that's slow down, burn muscle tissue, then burn fat. But the problem is if you slow down and burn muscle tissue and you ever stop starving yourself, I don't mean overeat. I don't mean being a glutton like the media has us believe 70% of the U.S. population is, which is ridiculous. I mean just eat a normal amount of food. You will gain all of the weight you lost back as fat. Why? You have less muscle tissue and your body's running slower. Don't starve yourself. It is not healthy. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are cold and overweight, and they're doing exactly what you said. And um, uh, that's why I found that interesting in your book. Uh, you were talking about how um, the set point for these rats um, change depending on the quality of the food um, that they ate. Can you talk about that? Yeah, the key thing to keep in mind here is that you, you alluded to this thing, that the set point, and if, if folks haven't read the book, I highly recommend, you know, pick up a copy of The Calorie Myth at caloriemythbook.com because what Sean alluded to is like, this is how your body actually works. Your body isn't a mathematical equation, and we understand this, right? For example, think of any other thing you eat. So there's calories, right? But there's also vitamin C and vitamin A and vitamin E and thiamine and riboflavin and phosphorus. You don't think about those things. Like vitamin C is essential to life, but you don't have to think about how many milligrams of vitamin C am I taking in and how many am I excreting out in my urine? Like, could you imagine if you actually had to think about that? So that's not how the body, it, it, it can't be, right? So for example, blood sugar is homeostatically regulated. If you do something to raise your blood sugar, your body and brain does something to bring it back down. If your blood sugar falls, your body and brain does something to bring it back up. We all learn this. The calorie myth is fundamentally this concept that energy balance works completely different than every other mission critical system in the body, which is of course absurd. Every system in the body works to regulate itself. The problem is, is when we struggle with overweight, it's just like struggling with diabetes. Someone with diabetes has not, they're not like lazy gluttons. Their body, the system in their body that is designed to regulate blood sugar has broken down. Now their body will still attempt to regulate blood sugar, but it does it at an inappropriate point because there's been a bunch of hormonal and neurological dysfunction that has been caused by the poor quality of food they have been told to consume. Obesity is the exact same way. So the question is not, our bodies want to weigh less. We're just consuming too many calories. The real issue is that our bodies and brains don't want to weigh less, regardless of the number of calories we consume, because we're experiencing an elevated set point, or what researchers call metabolic and neurological dysregulation, which is the signals and systems in our brain, gut, and hormones, which are designed to regulate our weight at an appropriate level of body fat, have become dysregulated, and they're not working appropriately. And the way you change that, the way you change the system itself, has nothing to do with quantity of calories. 
It has to do with quality of food, which makes a lot of sense, right? Think about any system in the world. If you wanna change the way your car is running, putting more or less gasoline in your car will not change the system. It will just, yeah, it yeah. just that's not what, the way it works. Now you put premium in your car's gas tank, the system will run differently. You put kerosene or lighter fluid in your car's gas tank, the system will be affected. Human biology, that system works the same way. It's about food quality and how that impacts the system and the system's regulation of weight. Yeah. Yep. I agree 100. percent And uh, that last question about the, uh, the the set point in the rats brings up my next uh, question. That you know, kind of people that uh, don't believe all the things you say. Uh, uh, one of the things they bring up is. You know, those, those studies were done on rats and we're not rats. What do you have to say about that? Sean, with respect, uh, individuals can disagree with fact. It's, it's fine. Like a lot of people thought that the earth was flat for a really long time. And it makes sense to think that the earth is flat. If you look out your window, it looks like the earth is flat, but it's not. And it's, it's unambiguous, right? Once you understand the science. The only thing that needs to be proved to show that the body automatically attempts to regulate caloric intake and energy balance is perform a study, restrict calories. If basal metabolic rate decreases and hunger increases, that's the body trying to regulate calories. Or perform a study where you force people or animals to eat more and basal metabolic rate increases and appetite decreases. That is the body automatically attempting to regulate inputs and outputs. So this is not a theory, it's not ambiguous. People just have a misunderstanding of the science. Obviously, the fact that we become full shows that the body has internal control mechanisms for the amount of food we're consuming. If you need other evidence, look at any other animal on the planet. Isn't it interesting that none of them could possibly understand what a calorie was? yet are able to avoid obesity and diabetes? Or what about every single person who ever lived prior to the previous three generations who had no concept of a calorie, yet experienced virtually no obesity and no diabetes? If conscious regulation of caloric, excuse me, of calories in and calories out was required for human health, how do any of those things work? They don't, right? It's kindergarten yeah, logic. Great question. And it's true to say, yeah. it's true to say, well, Jonathan, if you eat less and exercise more, you'll lose weight. That's true. Of course that's true. If you cut off your leg, you'll lose weight too. That doesn't mean it's a good thing to do, right? The goal is not short-term weight loss. There's all kinds of ways you could lose weight in the short term, right? If you take a bunch of cocaine, you'll lose weight in the short term, but you'll kill yourself. So the question is yeah. not like, can you lose weight in the short term by starving yourself? Of course you can. Turn on NBC's Biggest Loser. There's plenty of evidence. The question is, is it the best way to boost health and burn fat long term? Absolutely not. It fights against the body's innate systems. Whereas when you manipulate food and exercise quality, you work with the body's existing systems. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I had you for longer because uh, I got a lot of other questions. But um, uh, the one question I really want your opinion on is. Why do you believe people are so resistant to admitting that a calorie is not a calorie or what you say is true? People are, seem so resistant and want to fight it so, so much. Why do you think that's so? Humans, oh, it's a, that's, a, that's a hard one, Sean. I think it's, so a couple <laughs> things. One is, um, it, 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 is in, it makes sense intuitively that if you eat less and exercise more, you'll lose weight because it's true. That's what we just said, right? If you eat less and exercise more, you'll lose weight. That is true. And if you turn on television, you watch shows, you'll see it. If, you, if someone asked me, Jonathan, your job is to go on television and take someone who weighs 400 pounds and get them to 200 pounds as quickly as you can with no respect for their long-term health, or the practicality of what you put them through, or their ability to maintain that weight long term, there's, uh, yes, of course, you just take the person, starve them, and have them exercise excessively. That is the quickest way, right? Because they're gonna burn a bunch of muscle, they're also gonna burn some fat, they're gonna shed a bunch of water weight, their body's gonna cannibalize themselves, right? If you, if, if you were to say to me, Jonathan, 
I've got a bunch of weeds in my garden and I have 30 seconds to get all those weeds dead. I want all the weeds in my garden dead. Well, we would just take a bunch of gasoline and pour it all over your garden and it would kill all the weeds instantly. Unfortunately, it would kill everything in your garden. So the short term quick fix answer is eat less, exercise more. But look around, it's obviously not working and look in the science, it's not working and doesn't work long term. So the fundamental disconnect, Sean, is actually quite simple. We've been conditioned as a culture to look short term, right? Like what is the stock price doing today? What have you done for me recently? What, you know, five minute ads, eight minute ads, do this tomorrow. If your goal is to drop 10 pounds in one week, that, there's no secret to that. Ask any, uh, ask any bodybuilder, boxer, anyone who has to make weight. You do all kinds of unhealthy garbage to lose weight quickly. But if your goal is optimal health and long-term fat loss, you have to take a longer-term approach. But that's something that is a bit difficult in the modern era of tweets and such. <laughs> we want the short-term quick fix. So I think that's the difficulty. It's, it's Sean, just to be very crisp, it's actually not that one is right and one is wrong. Eat less, exercise more is the best approach for short-term weight loss. Eat more, exercise less, but smarter, aka higher quality food, higher quality exercise, is the right answer for long-term fat loss and health. So it's not that one is right and one is wrong. It's that there are two different approaches for two different goals. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, yeah. So if you want long-term results, you gotta you gotta do what you're saying. And if you want short-term and end up gaining more weight than you weighed before, you you use the eat less, exercise more model. Well, and Sean, and here's the, here's the bottom line that I think will really help your listeners. If you can eat 1,000 calories a day for the rest of your life, you will obviously maintain a lower weight. The question is not, is that, of course that's true. The question is, why in God's name do we now have a pop, like, who's going to eat 1,000 calories for the rest of their life? That doesn't make any sense. You might be able to do it for 21 days, but you can't do it for 21 years. And as soon as you stop, what's going to happen? Right. So it, it's a, not a question of can it work? Of course it can work. But does that mean we should do it? Well, no. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's exactly the reason why I started this uh, this website, is because uh, I know you've had experiences uh, with this as well. But uh, at one time I, I, I was eating 5000 calories. I ate 5000 calories for a week, I ate all the food in my house and didn't gain any weight. And I know you had experiences with eating 6,000 calories and you, you're not gaining weight. So um, that, that's the, that's the, you know, that's where I'm coming from is why would you want to eat a thousand calories when you could eat so much more? Most people that are dieting could probably eat twice as much as they're eating and still lose weight in the long term if they're eating the right food and doing the right thing. But Absolutely. Jonathan, uh, I appreciate, yeah, exactly. I, I I appreciate you coming on here, and uh, if uh, my listeners could uh, wanted to get a hold of you, how would they uh, find out more about yourself? The best way is to go to caloriemythbook.com. Again, that's caloriemythbook.com. You can grab a copy of the book. You can also sign up for a bunch of awesome free resources, and you can check out our radio show, which is on iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube and basically anywhere radio shows are available online. Yeah, I definitely recommend picking up the book. Uh, I, I had the book ordered before it had a cover on Amazon. <laughs> I can't wait. To, <laughs> I can't wait to get that. And uh, there's there's so much more, but I think we covered uh, quite a bit in this short time. So I appreciate that, and uh, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. It's a pleasure. Wait, wait! Don't stop listening yet. You can get fabulous free same recipes over at carrybrown.com. And don't forget your 100% free eating and exercise quick start program, as well as free, fun, daily tips delivered right into your inbox at baylorgroup.com. That's B-A-I-L-O-R group.com.